All right, so the rest of the, the talks in this session are about healthcare data, but this is specifically about a healthcare analysis tool and how to use it for things that are not involved with healthcare. So hopefully this will be interesting and useful to some of you. Um, it's actually been one of the biggest projects I did last year at my work. We're gonna talk a little bit about what right sensor data is and then about what a survival function is and how to estimate it. I have a couple of real world examples I'll show you, but they're kind of boring industry paying money customer examples. Um, and then we'll take a little detour into the SQL to actually compute these curves. So right sensor data is on a left to right timeline. Anytime you have data where at some point you stop, you stop being able to observe it and you don't know how far it goes on from there. Um, so if we wanted to, for example, know the average length of the lines in this, in this figure, we would know that it was more than what we can see because we know some of them go on longer than, than what is visible here. Uh, but we don't know exactly <laughs> How how much how much further they do go, and so it's it's a little hard to answer some questions about like how long these things go and how information like that. Um, and not all right sensor data is all beautifully lined up at the start of your experiment. Some of it is is about is from real world data, and so it's things like when did the customer start paying you, or when did somebody graduate from the, um, their MLIS, um, and so the, there's all this information about that's just it's based on how long you've seen it for, and you can be censored at any time because they drop out of the study, or because you hit the censoring time where there's no longer any, we, it's now today, and so we don't know if people have hit the event that we're interested in. So how do you find a midpoint when so many points are unknown? Well, they're not unknown. We do have some data about them. So there, there is a method, we can try and do this. Uh, but I'm actually also going to try and say that maybe this is not the best question. Uh, a lot of the time I, I get questions like, how long does it take someone to use such and such a feature? How long does it take someone to send an invite? Um, and they, they really want to know what happens in the first few days or in the first little while of us getting something. So it's just as good or better to answer how many people send one during the first day um, how, how, what proportion of people do something during the first seven days is, is just as useful or, or more useful than what's the average time? The average time could be much longer. But we can still use survival analysis to get that average time and some other information about that process. Um, we're gonna look at survival functions and they are these downward sloping curves that have time on the x-axis and the proportion that have not yet hit the event on the y-axis. The event is canonically death because of survival analysis. So it's often called the proportion surviving, and that's why it's called the survival function. Um, we're gonna estimate them with Kaplan-Meier curves, and they're a non-parametric uh, <laughs> estimator that, um, that will approach the true survivor function as we add more data. And it uses all the data available for every time point. So it, it treats the data that is like this as data that is like this by saying, I've seen it for the first few days, so I can count it for day one, regardless of when day one happened in the time. Um, then we can actually estimate, the actual estimator that we have is actually pretty simple. And we, we, it's a stair set function over each period of time. And we take the product of one minus the number of people who hit the number of observations that saw the event at time t over the number of observations we know about at time t. Um, and as the censoring goes on, you're going to have more and more observations drop out of that bottom number. You're going to have, you, you're just going to not know about people for. I, uh, some of my paying customers I know about for four years or three weeks or whatever. But as, as, I get, as I get further out and I start looking at four years, I have fewer and fewer customers that I know about for that long. And so there's that number in the denominator gets smaller and smaller. Um, and one other wrinkle of the survival function itself is that it, um, this estimator of it will often not go all the way to zero because you would have to have every single, you would have to have one minus one in the product. And that would mean that every single one of the, the observations that you knew about at a certain time um, saw the event. And, but we know we have censored data, so that's not likely to happen. 
<laughs> but if you do do that and you have your, your you have your estimator, it's really easy to find the median. And it's not the mean that people are actually asking for, um, but the median is probably close enough for what people really want. Um, and so you can just find out what's the proportion that survive. What you you want to find out when 50% of the proportion have have met the event. And so that's just something you can find on the curve and go down to the timeline. But that's not all you get. You get this entire curve. And so this is a real data set from what from my real work where we want to have time that a customer stays a subscribing customer and is paying us. Uh, and so I can answer questions about like, um, what's the probability that somebody will stay for the first seven days after they sign up? Or what's the proportion that stayed for an entire year? Um, and this is a lot more rich of a data set than just what's the average. But that's not all. Uh, you, can have, you can look at different groups of data and compare their curves on the same chart and get a feel for which ones are more likely to hit that event sooner or, sooner or later. Um, and this is our, our favorite example because it gave us some really good business objectives to change things around. Um, when we um, when we bill people annually, they're more likely to drop out in the first 30 days than when we bill them monthly. But after the first 30 days, they're more likely to stick around for one year than they are than monthly customers are to stick around for just two months. So we really want people to stick around and keep paying us. So this incentivizes us to give discounts for annual subscriptions and try and sell them more for people. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how to do this in SQL. And you probably don't need to do this in SQL for what you're doing. You might. Um, it's cool. But you can definitely do this in R or Python. And then it's a, a lot simpler. It's a little more straightforward. Uh, but I work in dashboard land. And uh, I need to sh show this data, update it periodically with all the real data behind it. And I don't want to have to do some kind of crazy job that runs Python every night and uploads a file with the image in it every time. Um, so I just have, I just do it in SQL. And I'm able to actually get that data right away in the, in the data for, in the, in the dashboard for people to see it. So there's a couple of tricks I'm going to play. Um, I'm going to generate a list of numbers. I'm going to sum the results of the case statement. And then my most mathematical trick here, believe me on this one, we might need to look it up. But this, the log of a product is equal to the sum of the logs. So we can rewrite that product function so that we take the log of it, we change that to the sum of the logs, and then we take the exponential of the whole thing to get it back out into the, the right frame. Um, and that gives us. We, that can let us use tools that are all built into SQL. The SQL does not know this no, a notion of taking a product over many rows. But it's pretty cool with taking a sum over many rows. So all you have to do, all you have to have in your main table is the event time and the time scene. And the event time is going to be null for all those censored observations. Um, it's going to, you're going to have um, a lot of those censored observations where you just don't, they don't ever hit the event. You, they might hit eventually later, but you don't have that data yet. Uh, but you always know how long you've seen them for, whether that's one week or four years or whatever it is. And so you just get that into the same frame and put it all together. And then as like a framework for our query, for our next part, we're going to generate a list of the, the time periods that we want to go over. Um, and we're going to do this with row number. So we're going to some, create this, this table called day shift by selecting the row number of <laughs> over, over anything from a big table and limiting to 3,000. So I only want 3,000 days. So this is going to give me a list of 1 through 3,000. And I can play with that. And you just use it as a set of numbers. I apologize for there being a slide that is 100% SQL. But I promise you, this is just calculating 1 minus di over ni for each of those time periods. But let's look at it. So for each of those time periods, so we're from day shift, our list of 1 through 3,000. Um, I get th the day number. I get 1 minus. Um, I take the sum of the time when they, remember, this is the, the, the numerator is the people who have actually seen the event at that time. So we've seen, it for, we've seen them for that amount of time. And the event time is not null. 
Um, and then the denominator is how many we joined from our, our table that has our data in it. And so that's all the ones that we've seen that where the time seen is greater than or equal to this time number. But, so now I've got a table that's just one comma one minus di over ni. And all, I want to pull it together and get that product function. So I get to use a summation um, as a window function. So, um, so I take the exponential of the sum of the log of the inside, the one minus di over ni, um, and I take it over unbounded preceding and current row. So that takes all of the previous rows and take and adds them up for up to the current row. So that for every ti, you have t t one by itself, and then t one minus t two, and then t one minus t two minus t three, and so on. And then this gives you a, a table that um, just has the day number and then the proportion that survived for each time. But I told you you could have more than one curve. And you can have them in your SQL without having to compute each of these separately. Um, you just need some categorical variable and to include that in your original data set. Um, and then when you create calculate the, the DI over NI for each of the, the days, you also, you also group by your categorical variable. So I would have a day num comma billing period here, and I would group by day num comma billing period. And then when I get to the end, I just tell it to partition by billing period so that it's, it's so it calculates these separately for the two different billing periods or however many cases that you have in your thing. Um, and then you still have your unbounded proceeding and current row to get your multiplication over all the past values of TI. Um, and then you'll get something like this where you have the day number and then also the, the period, different values for the billing period or whatever your categorical variable is. So time to event analysis is pretty cool. You can use it. It can help you out. Um, you can find the average time to an event, but that's not all. You can actually understand the process and get some different, get some data about like how long different proportions of time last. And perhaps most excitingly, you can compare different groups um, and make business decisions based on which of them are more likely to hit those events and how frequently. So. <sighs> Thanks for listening to me. Um, you can find me on the Survival Analysis channel on the CSV Comp Slack. Um, all right, so I'll still be in the Q&A channel like everybody else. Um, I'm Ansate on Twitter, and I'm Ansate at Weirder Earth on Mastodon. Awesome. Thank you so much, Melissa. I'm going to clap. <laughs> My cat is determined to be part of this. Hello, kitty. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we have a question, if you don't mind answering, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, how much slash what kind of dialogue did it take to switch to this method versus using average slash rates? Wow, what a good question. Um, it was actually an idea proposed by my CEO. So that meant we had plenty of buy-in right away. Um, <laughs> uh, they, they had heard about survival functions and, and knew that they could have something that could give them that comparison over groups. And that was really what they were going for. And the, and, but, um, but they still asked me questions in that midpoint way. And I just don't answer them. I just answer them their first seven days or the first day or something. Cool. We still have a bit of time. So if anyone has any other questions, uh, I'm sure Melissa will gladly try to answer it as much as she can. Well, she totally will answer it. I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just turn my camera back on. OK. I'm not alone if now. <laughs> If everyone's uh, happy, I'm, Melissa will be around. She does have a Slack channel on CSVConf, which hopefully she'll visit after the conference as well. And oh, that's a good question. Ooh. Any suggestions for background reading? The slides in the SQL are on Zenodo. Um, the, the book I've been using, I hope this is not flipped for you, is Survival Analysis by Klein and Klein. 
Um, and it, this is just chapter one. There's so much more. There's all these statistical tests to tell you whether those curves are different or ways to put covariates in there and add them into the thing. Like there's, there's so much more to survival analysis. This is just like the very tiniest bit you could do to be, to do something useful. Great. Wow. All these great questions. Uh, someone has asked, can you tell us a little more about your own background? Um, I, I'm a data analyst slash data engineer. I've been doing this for a long time. Um, I work at a startup and I'm just the one data person there. So I do all of the product analytics and financial analytics and things like that. Uh, but I'm very interested in government and open data and things like that. And so I'm always really happy to be here at CSB Comp. Amazing. And another question is how, sorry, have you used survival analysis for forecasting? I have not. I think that that would be interesting. And this has me thinking of looking at outcomes for program evaluations. Any warnings for people trying to apply it? Uh, I think you should totally try it. Um, and th that would be an easy thing to, to have separate curves for. So different programs and what are the, the outcomes and when did people reach them? And do people reach them from certain programs faster than others? Cool. Well, then, if there are no other questions, which I feel like when I said, does anyone have questions, everyone came out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but a big thank you from all of us at CSV Cough because, Mel, you've been one of our biggest supporters for many years now. So thank you. <laughs> you keep accepting my talks. I keep coming. And they're always so much fun. So thanks so much. Thanks, thanks so much. Everybody.